Need inspiration for your medical school personal statement? Your personal statement is the most challenging component of your medical school application. Therefore, it must be your best component. And excellent personal essays explain who you are and why you want to be a doctor. And remember, it's crucial to show rather than tell what experiences prepared you for medical training and practice. So before you sit down and write your personal statement, I'll show you some medical school personal statement examples to get an idea of what's expected of you. Hi, I'm Natalie Stoberman and I'm an admissions associate here at BMO. Now before we get started, make sure you subscribe on whatever social media channel that you're watching this on so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And if you would like us to help you with your medical school personal statement, click on the link above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. And FYI, check out the timestamps in the description of this video so you can navigate to specific sections that you're interested in. So in this video, I'll cover an AMCAS medical school personal statement example, detailed analysis of that example, and I'll give you some tips for a stellar medical school personal statement. And by the way, we're giving away a $50 Amazon gift card every week to the best comments and questions. So leave your comment below for a chance to win. And make sure that you watch until the end of the video because I'll reveal our secret to writing a stellar medical school personal statement. So let's get started. AMCAS Medical School Personal Statement Example. So before we get started, please note that we've removed any identifiers from this essay and specific cities and names have been replaced by generic titles. So let's dive in. Who are you? At 20 years old, I stood face to face with my abuela, but I was now a stranger. Our relationship had been erased with those three simple words. My abuela, as I had known her, was gone. I had been fighting this reality for the past few months but now was assured there was no chance to reverse the effects of her dementia. In the following weeks, I read medical research looking for evidence of treatments that would heal her, and I found only literature suggesting ways to slow her progression. Fearing that any one of my family members could be the next victim, I did what I could to educate them on the importance of diet and exercise. I often escorted my abuela to her doctor's appointments and ironically found comfort and support in the same office where we had learned of her diagnosis. The compassionate demeanor of her physician was inspiring. Through knowledge and education, she was able to provide a momentary respite when the inevitability of losing a loved one was drawing near. I was confronted by this unique juxtaposition of grief and inspiration which drove me to explore medicine and the physician's role when treatment and prevention have failed. This newfound notion of compassionate care led me into my next semester at university. Fortunately, I had the opportunity to work with the underserved populations in the city through the ABC clinic. The clinic's mission was to improve both functionality and self-sufficiency through rehabilitation. I was paired with a 32-year-old female named Patty who suffered from cerebral palsy and cystic fibrosis, a debilitating marriage that left her confined to a wheelchair. Upon meeting Patty, I noticed she avoided eye contact and presented with a general malaise that seemed to weigh on her. Initially, our training sessions were templated and we were encouraged to follow a regimen that worked for the majority of patients. This proved ineffective for Patty. She rarely smiled and reluctantly transitioned from one exercise to the next. Our training had only begun, but quickly stagnated. I sought permission to implement my own techniques and drew on my past coaching experience with youth soccer players. I educated Patty on the short and long-term benefits of specific exercises, which helped her make her own decisions. I hoped letting her determine her treatment plan would evoke a sense of self-sufficiency that would in turn enable her to attain a better quality of life. Her mental progression became clear as the new Patty was ready to tackle each session. Our session showed me that addressing the psychology of the patient can be just as important as the physical. Especially in populations that may be subjected to feelings of helplessness, this aspect is paramount. With a poor psychological disposition, even common procedures and treatments can be rendered ineffective. 
Ultimately, it would take a professional who is able to understand and leverage the physical and psychological aspects of disease to provide the best outcomes. With a desire to promote patient advocacy and ease the many manifestations of pain, I sought a position where I could assist in the treatment of disease rather than the rehabilitation. I joined an orthopedic practice, scribing for Dr. Smith. It became clear that many of our patients suffered from chronic conditions that did not have a simple resolution. It was discouraging to realize we were limited in our treatment options and could not offer more. This realization came with the encounter of an 80-year-old female with a failed total knee replacement. She had been traumatized from her experience with her primary knee and had been putting off any further treatment. Despite being an hour behind schedule, Dr. Smith sat and listened as both a physician and a confidant. He acknowledged her symptoms and spoke to her as a person, understanding what she wanted out of her life. I observed the epitome of compassionate care from Dr. Smith and learned that patients are not simply an aggregate of their symptoms because his unique style of listening and communication was able to soothe the emotional burden that may otherwise be suffered alone. This standard of care is one that I aim to emulate and grow upon in my career so I can show my patients that their respective diseases are not their identity. I have learned that the difference between a good physician and a great physician is that the former treats the symptoms while the latter treats the person as a whole. The appreciation I have for physicians and their profession reminds me of when I felt lost in the shadow of my abuela's dementia. I was given a healthy outlet to voice my concern and found that knowledge governs the unknown. I see that a physician fulfills both the need for authentic communication and the expertise to intervene when the body cannot heal itself. I have built a passion to transfer this same privilege to others through compassion, and I will embody what it means to treat the patient, not the disease. Detailed analysis of the example, how to make your statement successful. This is a coherent story of how and why the author is motivated to pursue medicine. Much like an academic essay, this personal statement is composed of an introduction, body paragraphs, and conclusion, which makes it easy to follow. And the introduction has a gripping first sentence that captures the reader's attention. The rest of the introductory paragraph, though short, acts as a roadmap for the reader and helps him understand the purpose of the statement. The end of the introductory paragraph includes a good transition sentence that allows the reader to understand that the introduction is over and hint at what will be discussed in subsequent paragraphs. You may have noticed that the transition sentences and phrases used in this essay create a natural transition from one experience to the next. The body of this personal statement is structured around two solid experiences that demonstrate how the author decided to become a physician. And since you have a limited amount of space to impress the reader with your story, focus on the quality of your experience. This is exactly what this essay does. The writer uses concrete examples to showcase the most relevant qualities and meaningful experiences. Note that this statement's conclusion is not a dry summary of the essay. And with the conclusion, the writer makes a connection with the essay's introduction, which makes the essay feel complete. Tips for a stellar medical school personal statement. Now it's time to share our secret that will ensure your personal statement is absolutely flawless. One, revise your essay carefully. Make sure that your statement has good structure, flow, and no grammatical errors. And if you want someone to review your work, make sure that it's someone you trust. It's important that you don't have too many people reviewing your personal statement because too many differing ideas and thoughts can make you doubt your statement. It's always a good idea to have your statement reviewed by a professional who can objectively review your statement and give you personalized feedback. Two, avoid using the passive voice in your statement. For example, instead of writing, I was taught by my parents to blank. Write, my parents taught me to blank. Try to start your sentences with the subject, in this case, your parents, and then the object or action of your sentence, which was what they taught you. This will help your sentences flow better and cut down on your words and characters. Three, make sure to avoid cliches and unverified statements. 
four, be concise and avoid any fillers. You don't need to fill the entire character count, so choose quality over quantity. Five, be genuine about your journey, but don't turn your personal statement into an autobiography. Those are our tips to help you ace your personal statement. But check out our blog to read more about medical school personal statement examples. I've included a link in the description of this video for easy access. And if you'd like us to help you with your medical school secondary essays, click on the link above or below this video to schedule your free consultation. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, so please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And if you have any questions about medical school personal statements that I didn't cover in this video, let me know in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Don't forget that we're giving away $50 Amazon gift cards every week to the best comments and questions. So leave your comment below for a chance to win. Thanks for watching. See you next time.